They're calling the official military of Libya, which they should call the Libyan military, pro-Gaddafi forces. No, 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 that's political language. Now, what they, what they, what they, um, they might have committed rape. This is a possibility, okay? But it's not a massive thing, and I doubt they've done it. I doubt there's been any rape by Gaddafi forces. But I know that there's been rape by the other side, because there's been a conference that was held here last weekend, uh, like women who were raped on the other side of Libya came forward and were talking about it. And no one is forcing anybody to do this. Anybody who visits Libya will see that this country is... Uh, it's, it's kind of a free-for-all in certain ways. Uh, no one forces people to do anything. There's all these alliances. People are part of tribes. No, 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 no. The, 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 rape, the rape that's being talked about is a means to continue the war and to justify it. And the, one of the women who brought it up in Tunisia who was talking to refugees because not even cite anything to the ICC. There's no proof about any of this stuff. They didn't cite anything. They're just saying 10,000 people told me, this many people told me. There's no names, no numbers, no. This is, a, this is a justice. It's a mockery of uh, rationality. People have to look into these things. Uh, and the ICC is being used as, frankly, the ICC is a political tool, just like the United Nations Security Council. Both of them are political tools being used to crush nations that oppose uh, uh, the United States, Britain, France, Germany, and, and their agenda for the Mediterranean and the rest of the world. All right. Well, you've mentioned that you're going to have uh, photographs from that rally uh, that'll be coming out, and you've also mentioned the report on the uh, the scientific findings about uh, depleted uranium weapons that have been used in Libya. Um, what else can we look forward to coming out from uh, your reporting from the area? For now, uh, that that's what uh, I'm going to put forward. I'm working on that. I have some logistical things I need to clear up here. Uh, I've, I've I've taken a lot of pictures of uh, different sites here. And I'm going to come forward with them. I've been watching the media here, and uh, I'm astonished at the level of lies they, 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 they can actually come up with. The Roy, uh, Reuters reporter was actually kicked out of here because he, he lied about He lied. It's very clear. He didn't leave this hotel. Saying he met with Libyan resistance or opposition in Tripoli, he didn't leave this hotel. He wrote about that, and he said it's a good sign. It's like it's a good sign, a sign of hope. He didn't leave this hotel whatsoever. He stayed in his room the whole time or went to the press releases. He's saying he met with opposition. They kicked him out. They, they waited on it, and then they kicked him out because the, the reporting he was making was absurd. Do you, uh, do you know watch. the name of that reporter? It's Nicholas something. I don't know him off, I don't know it offhand. It's Nicholas something. Reuters reporter Tripoli. You can look it up. You can find out. He didn't leave Tripoli, and he wrote about meeting with opposition. Opposition leaders. There's no opposition leaders in Tripoli. They're not a majority here at all. Like, it's ridiculous. If we're talking about democracy, if we talk about democracy, we can't ignore that rally. That was a million over a million people there. Okay? And the way I actually got the count was I looked at watches because I was on the rooftop. And this is not accurate. I'm not saying it's a scientific, uh, it's my personal estimate. There was over 10,000 people. That's what the Washington Post reported, which was totally uh, wrong. That was false. I counted the blotches, okay? And uh, based on how many blotches there was, I made units. And then I got that estimate. And that's before everybody even came. I left earlier than everybody else. And what they are saying is ridiculous. There was no reports about it in a lot of the press. There was French reporters here. I didn't hear anything about it in France. My colleague didn't hear anything about it in France. Some places talked about it for two seconds, and they just casually, uh, casually uh, passed it by. You're saying Gaddafi is not loved by his people. Okay, well, why are a million, a million and a half people out of a country of six to six point four million people there? You do the math, and you see these people are upset. They, they, they feel voiceless. You know, the Libyans aren't organized. I'll be the first to admit that this country is not heavy. There's problems, but there are some people. There are some people that go all over the world and they take advantage of these, uh, these uh, discontents. That's all they do. And they, Some people on the other side think if Gaddafi's gone, this place will be like Hollywood. And I guarantee you, based on historical cross-referencing of countries invaded by NATO, living standards always fall when the United States, Britain, NATO get involved. This country will not turn into Hollywood. 
there's this concept of the American dream in the rest of the world. It's it's, it's total fallacy. They're, the United States doesn't even live the American dream. They show on television majority of actors or people on the TV show are professionals. That's not reality. The majority of people don't drive uh, nice cars. Poverty so high in the United States. Anybody who's visited it, anybody who uh, has some elementary uh, elementary knowledge of the United States and has been there on the ground knows that, that that's not true at all. And some of the young people think that this place might end up like the United States, but there's some. I'm saying they exist, but there's some. They are not a majority. They are not a majority whatsoever. And anybody who's come to this country who opposes Gaddafi or not, who opposes him and his sons, such as Saif al Islam's family or not, will tell you that this stuff is ridiculous. I've spoken to people who are their opponents who don't even agree with what the media is saying or what, with the, what the opposition is saying. I was present when a boat uh, came from Benghazi. The boat was filled with 100 plus. They were over 100, 160 people. This is a small country. Benghazi is a smaller city. They came over. That's significant. They all came to be back here. They had green flags. Some people also went to Benghazi. That was a very small number. The Red Crescent and Red Cross organized this. This stuff says something. Why isn't the media reporting about this? Very simple. Journalism, journalists are being used as a weapon against the Libyan people and Libya. The Prophet Jesus, or Gandhi, or Moses, or whoever you believe, or Prophet Muhammad was the leader of this country, they would make him look like saint. I'm, you don't need to believe in any faith. I'm just using this as an example. They would make that person running this country look like Hitler, or, or the devil, or whatever you want to call, call him. It's not about Gaddafi. It's about breaking this country. He has so much support in the continent of Africa, it's unbelievable. And because of this war, there's famine in other parts of Africa. Because Libya has been part of a robust project to develop the rest of Africa. And because they froze Libya's funds in these sanctions, tens of thousands of people have become unemployed in the rest of Africa. Agricultural projects have been abandoned. Development projects have been abandoned. This has already hurt the rest of Africa and African unity. The, I spoke to their cooperate, uh, the, the director for their foreign investments, which is basically based mostly in Africa, and he's also their uh, minister of uh, cooperation, international cooperation, I believe. I was there with a group, uh, and we, we spoke to him, and, and he made it very clear the United States and uh, its EU partners and allies were not happy about what was going on because it conflicted with their interests. They want Africa to be a country where they can... Uh, they can uh, take the raw resources, develop them, do something, manufacture them, and sell them back for a higher price. They don't want Africa to develop, and this is, this is part of the picture of what's going on here. This war is not humanitarian. This war is not about saving lives. It's killing people. They're killing civilians. They're bombing residential areas. They've, the, the Libyan military's structure's been destroyed. Okay? The people that are fighting now are mostly civilians and volunteers. There is basically very little left of the Libyan military. It was never about the Libyan military. And any honest person knows that. All right, well, uh, how about the time frame for how long you'll continue to be in the country? What are you thinking for in terms of your reporting? Um, I believe that I will be here approximately another month. I was originally going to stay in Tunis longer. I was in Tunis before I came here uh, for a few days. Um, I, will, I wanted to do some sociological uh, research work there, survey work. I was going to, uh, I was going to work through uh, the Carleton University to do this. Uh, that has to be put on hold because uh, I'm going to spend more time in Libya. Hopefully I will be able to go to Tunis. And since I am bringing up Tunis, I'd like to mention that I also saw the refugee camps in Tunis, which had Libyans, migrant workers, people from the rest of Africa. And these camps in uh, these places had barbed wires, armed guards, military personnel. And do you know which countries were looking, uh, looking after? The same countries helping bomb this country. The United Arab Emirates and Qatar. And I've been told that they are trying to recruit people there to infiltrate this country and to wage war from the West against this country. And as we can tell, there, is, there are uh, forces, small forces in the West giving uh, the Libyan government and the Libyan military problems in the Western uh, mountains. So this is what they're doing. They're not there to help people. This is a PR stunt, and this is part of the strategy against this country. Tunis and Egypt, before the war was started, even 
had agreements with Hillary Clinton and visited both countries to secure their cooperation against Libya. This is why weapons are coming in from Egypt to the east, and Tunis has been part of uh, this project. The government's been covertly helping NATO, uh, and the British have even talked about sending troops there as part of a humanitarian mission on the border with Libya. They've cut this country off. They're refusing to send money to this country because, as I said earlier, one of the first places they bombed was the printing press for Libyan dinars, money. So this war has to do with currency and has to do with economic objectives and with breaking the economy. They bombed that. The other place money is made for, for Libya, and I told the Libyans it's a big mistake to do this. You should be self-sufficient for producing your own money, was Britain. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is the other place that uh, Libyan currency is producing. And they had agreements for money to come before the sanctions. So what they, the British have done is illegal. They have to send the money. They can't send anything after the sanctions, but they've been withholding the money in an effort to squeeze Lib the Libyan economy and the Libyan government and, and to make a currency shortage in this country. So you've been meeting with, uh, with members of the government in Libya, is that correct? I've been meeting with uh, people from all over the world, and I've, yes, I have met with, uh, I've met with the uh, government spokesman, I've met with uh, the deputy prime minister, for example, I've met with uh, the NGO, which is very important. The NGO, the fact-finding NGO, uh, the fact-finding NGO uh, in. Um, I'm sorry, I think I have a call from California, but I've been meeting with the Libyan uh, NGO, which is responsible, responsible, which is responsible. Uh, it's responsible for the fact-finding commission in. And I'm going to help them bring some parliamentarians here that I know from abroad to uh, come see uh, what's happening on the ground. Parliamentarians as in from Canada? Yes, as in from Canada. So uh, this might be a big surprise. We'll see if it happens. I've, have, I've had very positive responses. Although I have to say I'm very upset with the parliament in Canada. As you know, the vote in Canada was uh, una almost unanimous except for the Green uh, Party's leader, Elizabeth May the sole member of the Green Party in Parliament, everybody voted for the war. The New Democrats did, uh, the Bloc, the Liberals, the Conservatives. But still, they should come on the ground, see for themselves. I'm not saying that politicians are, are not politicians. Uh, I, I'm actually very pessimistic when it comes to politicians. But coming on the ground in itself is, is, is something. Well, I'm sure you're aware Canada's Foreign Minister uh, John Baird made his first uh, trip as, as Foreign Minister to, to Benghazi to meet with the, the rebel opposition party. Yes, I'm aware of that, and uh, on a personal note, I have no respect for him whatsoever, or his <laughs> or that type of uh, politicking. Um, I, I'm aware he came. I think it's unfortunate. Uh, I, I think that Parliament of Canada made a very bad decision. Uh, in fact, a very ignorant position, and uh, it's inexcusable uh, to support a war without knowing anything about it. Nobody knew the facts about this war. And, well, no, actually, I take that back. Governments knew the facts about this war. They had the satellite imaging to know that, uh, to know that planes weren't bombing civilians. NATO knew the facts. They all know. They're liars. Plain and simple. They're all liars. Now, as far as parliamentarians are Concerned. It's a little different, but I'm not going to. I'm not here to uh, as an apologist for them. I think what they did is wrong. I don't respect it, but I think they should still come on the ground, and hopefully some minds will be changed. Some minds. Well, I very much look forward to seeing that. I think that would be positive, uh, even if uh, even if there's not much that comes from it, but it would still be a positive step. Um, all right. Well, anything else that you want to report from from uh, Tripoli tonight? Uh, the I just want to say that I, I'm astonished by the Libyan people living under bombardment. I said it before, but it's something you won't, you don't know until you see yourself. These people are trying to live normal lives and respectful lives, despite the fact that the country is being bombed, and it's brought the country together. Maybe Gaddafi was not popular before this war. Maybe I wasn't here, and a lot of people I knew didn't say good things about it. But this has brought the country together. It's unified the majority of the people. When I say majority, that means the majority. Okay, I'm not saying everybody. The majority of people have been unified. They do need to clean house. But I'm telling you right now, NATO brings its troops here. These people are going to fight. Maybe NATO will sweep through. Maybe not. 
but these people will fight with everything they have. All right, very interesting, and I very much look forward to, to your future reports, and I hope that we can keep in touch during your time in Tripoli. Um, so once again, thank you so much for your time today, Madi uh, Nazamroya. Thank you, James. Thanks for. Uh, I know it took a long time to reach you and reach me, but uh, Internet's on off, and there's a war going on. Certainly understandable. Well, we look forward to your future updates. Thank you again.